Crowded house, it's only natural. Well, I can't believe it. I've been trying to get a hold of him for ages and I've managed to get him on the phone. Uh, the legend that is Scotty McClue. Good morning, Scotty. How are you? Ah, oh, good morning, Dean. Dinky do. I'm just listening to Crowded House here. They're saying it'll be a Crowded House for you and me in that studio there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, listen, I hope you don't mind. I just had to ring you up. I thought, what a combination. You've got Scotland's top entertainer, Dean Park, and he's on the radio. And this is something very, very special. This is what the audience have been crying out for for years. <laughs> You're some man, oh, Scotty. It's terrific. And I just had, I thought, I have got to ring this man and say hi to him because I've attended your live shows. Yeah, I didn't. And, I didn't know that. No, no, I would keep. I wouldn't. I wouldn't let you know that. You know, in case you got me up on the stage or something like that. You know, or, <laughs> have or, you, or, or, you know, made me one of your wee skateboards doing the front. You know, <laughs> you so, didn't. I would know you had the bonnet on, and the gloves. <laughs> That's right. Well, I turned it round. You know, so I wouldn't attract attention. <laughs> So I was sitting there in my bonnet room, and, uh, and I've got to tell you this, Dean, right, right, I've got to tell you this. Yeah. A posh friend asked me if I'd come and meet another posh friend and could I tidy myself up. <laughs> so I said, no problem. So anyway, along I goes, and it went well, and she says, Scotty, it's been very nice to meet you. I says, it's been very nice to meet you, Elizabeth. <laughs> and then as I left, I says to her, I says, well, I think that went well. I don't think I showed you up. And she says, you've got your jumper on a V-neck the wrong way around with a V in the back. For you goodness st- sake, Dean, you know, you can't make it up. Do you still wear a V-neck? Aye, I said, but I don't put my tie out over the front now. <laughs> I remember you used to do that. You used to wear it with a tie over the front. Everyone's dad did it with the front. This is my dad, and he had a wee bit of a shed in his hair with a wee bit of, uh, of shiny cream on his head. Brill cream. Brill cream, was that? That's that's that. It. I, and, uh, I don't know what to do there. And, uh, and then he had his tie out over the front of his jumper. Oh, it's funny, isn't it? Brill cream's back in vogue, you know. People wear brill cream now. <laughs> did you know that? That's fantastic. Aye, people wear brill cream now. <laughs> and, you know, and, and, you know, it is okay if you've not got any hair. <laughs> I suppose so. <laughs> it makes it spiky. It's spiky. Do you not remember the barber used to chop your ear, Dean, and all the wee spiky bits were left in your ears and everything, <laughs> and then he rubbed this kind of gel in that made your hair go hard? That's... Hey, that's and, then, right. and then you were out in the rain and it went softer. Oh, do you know what I hated? The, the bee bits I heard down the back of the shirt. Oh, aye. And you're jaggy all day with it. Aye. And, and oh. they don't, but now they, now they put like the, 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 the stick, the vacuum cleaner down the back of your neck <laughs> and all that. Right. But they never <laughs> used right. to do any of that. No, no. You used to leave a, my, uh, t- I'll tell you the truth, right? My uncle Peter was a hairdresser, right? <laughs> and he used to cut my hair in the house. <laughs> And it was those clippers, it wasn't the electric clippers, it was those clippers he did with, he, he, you know, to do with his hands. Oh, I like the use for pruning roses. You want to see the state of my hair. You want to see the state of my hair. <laughs> <laughs> it's no much better than there. Oh, but wait till I tell you. Somebody made a very good comment to me the other day. They said, "How come the people that should be running the world are either cutting hair or driving taxis?" <laughs> and it's true. Isn't it? As soon as you get in the air, the first thing he says is, "Who did your hair?" Now the answer to that is going to say because it's a right mess. I said, "You did it three weeks ago." <laughs> So that shuts that you know. Then he starts on about the government. I blame the government, to be honest, for the mess we're in. I know. That's that. Then the taxi driver gets in. How you doing, sir? No problem. Just sit by if you don't mind. You put your seatbelt on. Um, so, wh- wh- how's things with you, son? Are you working at the moment? No, I mean, he is. This is the problem. I blame the government. And he starts. I know. It's brilliant. Yeah, this is why we run to the airport, please. I don't want to hear all this. I've just heard it on the news. I just want to sit quiet in the taxi. <laughs> it's like, I don't know if you've ever taken one of these cheap flights. Right? I have to take these cheap flights. Oh, I do. I do. Jet too. I, 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 well, I will. Anyway, the, the thing is, the current, are you, would you like something to eat? I think, mm. no, I'm going to London. It takes less than an hour. One day the wind was that strong that it was doing in about 50 minutes. <laughs> 
you know, he was hedge hopping for half the journey. <laughs> and he was doing for about 50 minutes. And then, uh, and then, of course, you can't get a slot. You're waiting for 20 minutes at your end. But, that's right. You know, that's, but, you know it's, it's the daft stuff. you got the security, and you can't even have a joke with him now. No, 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 no. You've got to keep a straight face. You know, because I went to security one day, and he says to me, he says, did you pack your bag yourself? I says, no, the butler did it. That's why I'm flying with you for nine pounds. <laughs> That's a classic, isn't you know, it? And then the next thing he says to Rudine, he says, has your luggage been unattended for any length of time? He says, it's been in the loft for six months. Stop it. I don't understand. Oh, that's brilliant. And he says, take your shoes off. I says, do you really want to risk this? <laughs> <laughs> Have you got smelly feet? No, no, it's just I have any socks on. Oh, <laughs> you have no socks on? <laughs> <laughs> so I'm standing there, you know, like some sort of Eastern religion great potentate. <laughs> <laughs> you're something else, are you? Oh, right, yeah. listen, listen, let me play a song, right? I'll play a song to, for goodness sake. To, 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 I, just, I just wanted to tell you just No, no, don't go away. No, don't go away. I'm oh. going to well, play a song and I'll bring you back. I'll stay for a minute if it's okay with you. You just stay there, right? <laughs> <laughs> He's off his head. Scotty McClue will be back after madness. This is certainly the house of fun this morning, let me tell you. On the line, I've got Scotty McClue. Are you all right, Scotty? <laughs> Listen, this is awful good of you. This is just the measure of you as a man. Most folk cut me off. No, I won't but, cut you but off. you kept me on after the house of fun. <laughs> <laughs> so we've had Clyde House, and we've had the House of Fun, and we've had Dean Park, and we've had Scotty McClue. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You can't work that, can you? What a treat for the listeners. See, see your radio. Yep. I'm going to tell you right now, your radio is the radio station for Central Scotland. You yes. watch it. It's fantastic. It's because I think... Because it's a local, it. no, because I'm on it. It's a local radio station. It's yes. a local radio station. That's what we're trying to do here: play great music, have great people on the shows like yourself coming on and having a chat. And I'm thoroughly enjoying doing this. By the way, I'm absolutely loving this. I'm, I'm not surprised, Ian, because you have such a wonderful talent. I mean, you've been with us well. I bet I know say how many years. It must no. be at least X years. <laughs> X years, you know, and and it's so fantastic for the radio station to acknowledge one of Scotland's greatest talents and you're on the radio Stop the, it, stop you, no, it No, I'm just telling you straight so that you know and so the listeners all know anyway Right, you're a good man, you're a good man You know, I'm just, I'm just telling you straight Dean, and, and I think it's fantastic you know, so I'm, I'm telling you, you know I mean, you know, it's, it's, it's just great it's fantastic. and I was laughing away there during the House of Fun That's good fun. you with your uncle with the clippers going oh. up the back of your neck and I, I was just remembering all the things my neck used to be all red Draw with him. Yes. It was red draw, and then he used to put white powder on me. That's right. Remember that? And, and, and if he'd nicked your skin, then there was a wee bit blood. He said, don't worry, son, that'll heal up quickly. <laughs> you young fellas heal up. And then do you remember some of your pals in school, Dean? They had the big short hair. All the short hair's back now. Oh, everybody loves the short hair. Oh, it's fantastic. And they do, and the, they do the patterns in the hair now. Have you seen all this? I know. I wondered if that was accidental. No, no. The go faster stripes <laughs> doing the side of the heat. They go faster. I, the Wayne's love all that. <laughs> <laughs> and they've got a wee sticky out bit where I thought the clippers had just kind of slipped. No, it's the bit at the front that sticks out. Ah, right. The bit at the front that sticks out. So all these hairstyles we are seeing in the trains and the buses are actually intentional. Intentional, that's it. Away. Aye, oh, aye, that's what, they do. Right. that's what they do nowadays. And I'll tell you what else, have you noticed that cars nowadays, they all make a loud exhaust noise. When we were rains, the car, if you got a quiet car, you were laughing. Absolutely. Your right. uncle had a big old Rover and you couldn't hear it ticking over. That's right. And, and a boy came into the garage and, the ga and I says, oh, here a boy coming in to get his exhaust done, that's terrible. Right. He says, what do you mean? He says, that car's worth £90,000. I says, right. with the exhaust away. He says, it's no away. That's just meant to sound like that. They take the baffles out. They take the baffles out of the exhaust. That's what was baffling me. I, I remember when I was a wee boy, I learned to ride a motorbike. I had one of these wee Bantam uh, BSA. Oh, the 175. The 175, right. And I used, oh. to take, I used to take the baffles out the... 
out the exhaust pipe so that it went and I used to sit and roar this thing and I used to polish the head see they used to take the cylinder head off and polish it so that it would go faster yes you know that yes a polished head you can't even that actually it's fantastic and see the other thing sorry to jump back to the no. back of the neck but did anybody in school with you have like a big boil in the back of their neck oh they had them all the time and a boil plaster a big with a hole in it aye with a boil they used to put a plaster and put a hole in the plaster. <laughs> <laughs> and the Jensen Violet. Remember the Jensen Violet? <laughs> well, my boy once told me, he said, I got a bottle of cheap wine. He says, it was that cheap. I don't know who trampled the grapes, but there was a cotton plaster in it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's brilliant. It's brilliant. <laughs> I mind one night we went to a wedding and the band was that bad that when the waiter dropped a tree everybody got up and danced. Dance. <laughs> the old gags are the best son. Ah, you love all that stuff. It's fantastic. But uh, no, uh, what I was going to say, Dean, is there anything happening in the news that's caught your eye this morning? I've been looking oh, at the papers here. Have you seen this? Have you seen that? I caught this first thing this morning. A stag party dwarf dressed as a cop was uh, threatened with arrest for impersonating a police officer. What about that? He's four, he's four foot six, eh? How could you impersonate a police officer four foot six? You used to, to get into Glasgow, did you not have to used to be about six two? Uh, yeah, aye. But this guy, this guy was dressed as a, a, dressed as a cop, a, a party dwarf, and he's, he's, they, they'd taken in the, the groom, and he was a pantomime horse. Which end? And <laughs> no, he was the whole horse. Oh, the whole horse! He was the whole horse. One guy! One guy. Well, was don't the tell horse. the theatre that, they'll be cutting back. <laughs> And they, they stopped him going and they threatened him with arrest and they said he'd batten, he'd a batten, uh, this batten is a banned item and can inflict serious injuries. Uh, and he had said he'd cut the, he'd cut the batten down to half its size. <laughs> I can't even believe the police stopped him. I That's absolutely amazing. Well, let me watch because I'll tell you, I was at a party one night. This is absolutely joking apart. I was at a party one night and the doorbell goes, it was fancy dress. Yeah. Doorbell goes... Two people dressed as polis. And I says, that is fabulous, the radio, the lot. You just look great. Come in the period. He says, no, we're genuine. We're here to complain about the noise. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going, you guys look great myself here with the radio and everything. <laughs> were you singing? Is that what they were up for? That, that's all the nonsense. Oh. I sing at the party and that usually clears it. Oh, absolutely. Listen, I'm going to have to let you go. I've got loads to do this morning. It's been a privilege and pleasure, Scotty, having you live on your radio. Oh, Dean, it's been a great pleasure for me. I'm so glad I've found you on the radio. Good. Uh, this is now going to go around the world because I'll be telling everybody on Facebook and Twitter and all that stuff that you're here. Fantastic. Yeah. And will you come back on another morning for me? Any time at me all, you can be bothered, you know, and I'll give you a wee call and uh, if, uh, just chase me if you're busy. Right, no, but listen, I'll, Scotty, brilliant speaking to you. Dean, love to the people of your radio and love to your wonderful audience. They're fantastic. They're the luckiest people in the world. Thank Thanks a lot, Scotty. Speak to you soon. Bye-bye. 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 Enviro Windows, proud sponsors of Mid-Morning with Dean Park.